Hi, it's Mike. In this video, let's go sail full canvas over the high seas and sharpen our swords and raise our standards. The swashbuckling stories and adventures of pirates have been part of pop culture for centuries. From J.M. Barry's Captain Hook to Disney's Captain Jack Sparrow, the entire pirate's mythos is as colorful as the characters themselves. But beyond the pig legs and parrots, little is known about pirates other than what we see in the movies or on television. The image of a gnarly bearded man with a hook for a hand, a wooden leg, and a parrot on his shoulder is perhaps the only image of a pirate that we are accustomed to seeing. So in order to dispel some myths and shed some light on these savage sailors, we're gonna count down to 10 pirate facts that will shiver your timbers. Number 10, a noble profession. The ancient Greeks, other than being known as scholars and philosophers, are also some of the greatest mariners in the ancient world. The ships they built came only second to none as they traded with different countries, as well as explored uncharted regions by See. And it comes to no surprise that their mastery of the waves is amongst their most commendable talents. To the ancient Greeks, piracy is not at all illegal or outlawed. In fact, they view it as a perfectly viable and honorable way of earning a living. Two of the greatest literatures that came out of Greece, the Iliad and the Odyssey, even made many references to piracy as a means to transport and sell slaves that they have captured from rival territories. Number 9. A King's Ransom A little known fact about Roman Emperor Julius Julius Caesar was that he was once abducted by pirates. As they were holding Caesar for ransom, the pirates demanded that a ransom of 20 talents or $600,000 in today's standards in order to secure Caesar's release. In a strange turn of events, Caesar scoffed at his captors and felt offended with the ransom that they were asking. He went up to his captors, treating them like his subordinates, and told them that they should be demanding 50 talents from the empire in exchange for his freedom. So they did, and Caesar returned to Rome in one piece, but not before giving them a warning that he will hunt them down with a Roman fleet and crucify them. A threat that the pirates did not take very seriously. Later on, Caesar ordered to have a fleet assembled to pursue his captors. The pirates were eventually captured and Caesar immediately had them crucified. Oh, and Caesar did get his 50 talents back. Number 8. The Pillars of Pirates Pillaging We know that there are Spanish pirates and French pirates. We are even aware of pirates sailing the seas of Asia. However, none of them compared to his history's most successful band of scoundrels who sailed the high seas, the Vikings. By any modern or popular culture standard, the Vikings may not fit the description of what a pirate is, and they may be wrongly placed in the category as warriors. While this is partly true that they are warriors, the Vikings were pirates in all sense of the word. They raided, looted, pillaged, and burned their way through the 8th and 12th centuries, so much so that they have become to this day the most fearsome band of seafarers that you would not want to come across. Their reach covers the coastlines of their home of Scandinavia to the far reaches of Northern Africa. These guys could give lessons to Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones on how to actually be a pirate. Number 7. The Ultimate Thirst Quencher Often depictions of pirates include images of drunken men missing a few teeth and an unkept beard. It is not entirely false that pirates loved their drink, but they didn't just drink rum. While there was no scarcity of rum when they invaded a sleepy coast, pirates mostly preferred a mixture called grog. Traditionally, this was composed of rum diluted with water or weak beer. The concoction varies from one individual to another. To add flavor, some add sugar, lime, or even cinnamon in it. And how it actually tastes, we can only imagine. Number 6. Lucky Charms Pirates are very superstitious as history would write about them. This may be because of the unknown terrors under the sea that during that time had no scientific explanation. A giant squid may be seen as a monstrous kraken or a sudden storm may be mistaken for the wrath of a sea god. Whatever it is, pirates stay extremely careful not to pull on any superstitious strings that may spell disaster for them. One of the ways they did keep the bad juju away was through the use of charms and amulets. It may come as a surprise to us that to a pirate, piercing an ear with precious metals such as gold or silver is not a fashion statement, but instead it is a pirate's way of warding off bad health and keeping bad luck at bay. Number 5. Talking the Talk We've all done it. At one point in our lives, we have tried to make our best impression of what a pirate may sound like with the ars and the avast me mateys. But the truth is, pirates are not just from Europe. You know, in that strange combination of accents that seem to include the cockney and an alien form of Irish or Scottish. But the truth is, pirates were not just from Europe. They come from all parts of the world, from Scandinavia to Singapore. The so-called pirate accent was actually an invention of actor Robert Newton in Disney's adaptation of Robert 
Robert Louis Stevens' Treasure Island in 1950. Newton, in an attempt to add some texture to his character, spoke with a West Country accent and overdid it quite a bit. Years later, Newton used the same accent when he was cast in the movie Blackbeard the Pirate, thus the pirate accent was born and cemented into our consciousness. Number 4. Gentleman Pirate William Kidd was one of the most famous swashbucklers in the history of pirates. Known popularly as Captain Kidd, he was born from a wealthy family. However, as he was growing up, Kidd had taken an interest in piracy and thus became embroiled and involved with pirates. And here, of course, it does not mean he was stealing songs from the internet. And there are still doubts as to the validity of the narrative on whether or not Kidd was actually a full-fledged pirate. But regardless, he was still hanged in 1701 for, well, being accused of the crimes of piracy. After his execution, Kidd's body was hung above the River Times in chains as a warning to deter other pirates. Rumor also has it that during Captain Kidd's lifetime, he buried treasure in an unknown location. Treasure that may have saved his life from the gallows had he revealed where they were during his trial. Number 3. Captain Crazy Speaking of infamous pirates, Edward Teach, otherwise known as Blackbeard, has a reputation of being an absolute troublemaker with a flair for the theatrics. In one account, Blackbeard was said to have weaved hemp into his beard and set it ablaze before boarding a captured ship. Aside from that, he would dress in black from head to toe to add more gravitas to his entrance as to add an element of supernatural fear in his enemies. This trick was indeed quite effective as many of his victims would swear that Blackbeard was the devil incarnated. Number 2. The Mistress of the Sea Pirates do not have much when it comes to their mortality. Many of them would either end up in the gallows or blown to bits before reaching a ripe age. Also, many of today's beliefs paint pirates as mostly men. However, one of the most successful pirates to ever sail the pages of history was a woman named Ching Shi, also known as Madam Ching. Her cunning and ferocity in the seas gained her notoriety as she spread terror across China Sea in the early parts of the 19th century, commanding over 1,800 ships and around 200,000 pirates that included women and children. She constantly clashed with other pirates and went head on with the British and Portuguese empires as well as the Qing dynasty itself. She managed to escape death in the gallows multiple times and is one of the few if not only pirates to retire from her trade. And finally, number one, hoist the colors. When we say pirate ships were pirates, often the image conjured up in our heads is a white skull with crossbones on a black field. The most common and recognizable pirate flag in literature and popular culture is the Jolly Rogers, a skull and crossbow on a black field as mentioned earlier. However, pirate flags came in different styles and colors depending on the captain, country, or cultural background. Black may seem right as a universal color, but historically a red flag is more feared than any hue on any pirate ship. And the image of an hourglass incorporated into the personal standards of the ship makes it even worse. Red in the pirate world is a symbol that lets other ships know that the crew will be given no quarter and no prisoners will be taken. An hourglass quite plainly means that, well, your time is up. So there you go guys, hope you liked the video, and if you do, please hit that thumbs up button, and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you later.